Digital PH, enabling digital opportunities for Filipinos. Next Wave Cities. Baguio City is one of the prime locations for IT BPM industry with its constant recognition as one of the top 10 next wave cities in the Philippines since 2011 and one of the top 100 outsourcing destinations globally as recognized by Tholons, the leading strategic advisory firm for global outsourcing research. My name is Michael Oliver Delapena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I've been working for Cytel for going on 12 years now. I started out in, in 2004 as an agent for the very first account. As I moved through coach track training and became coach, operations manager uh, track training, and then became manager all the way to where I am now. Back in 2003, going into 2004, when I started with the company, our plans were to, to migrate to, to the U.S. So my sister-in-law has a nursing home there. But I've always said I wanted my, my kids to grow up in the same city where I grew up in. Inside now, this company has given me the opportunity to do just that. Knowing that for every one BPO uh, joining, uh, or associate that there are seven others uh, either family or friends that are helped by that it's even more rewarding than the physical or, or material stuff the next wave cities program focuses on the creation and development of ict hubs which will serve as business and innovation centers and investment destinations outside metro manila thus creating economic opportunities in these areas Stepping up the value chain. The developments in the game industry evidently shows the growing wider appreciation and interest of students and professionals in games development. I took game design and development in abroad. It's in Wholesale University. After I graduated, it was quite hard for me to get a job. Shortly after that, I went back from the Philippines. So I worked as a contract engineer for a group of companies. Shortly after that, I dedicated some of those time to teach game design and development in our local university here. As a role model, having the opportunity of getting educated from these schools that focuses on game design and development, what I can do is share my knowledge on teaching these uh, next generation of people who will be driving our economy here in all games. If they could take advantage of those computer skills, they could apply it to their work, bring in more dollars, basically, to the Philippines, uh, our country. The Stepping Up the Value Chain initiative aims to develop the higher value and more complex services capabilities that the country's IT BPM segments could offer. These segments are information technology, healthcare information management, software development, finance and accounting, animation and games development. CPH. CPH involves activities to develop startup ideas, skills and mindset as it conducts different activities to orient the youth on the opportunities to position Philippines as a leading digital economy. I'm French Maverick Lorilla. I'm from Davao City. I just graduated from the University of Southeastern Philippines, taking Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering. Right now, we're building a startup called Cloud Farm Innovations. Cloud Farm Innovation is a company that aims to help our Filipino farmers to simplify their lives in agriculture through technology. We see potential in agriculture and that is why we put our interest, our skills and talent to do such a thing that could help farmers to maximize their yield. Right now our company is developing a product which is a smart IoT sensor and app that allows farmers to maximize their yield through advanced monitoring and analytics of the crop condition. What inspires us to make this startup is we all came from family of farmers and 
we see a lot of opportunity in agriculture and there's a lot of problems needed to be solved. That is why we build this technology that will help farmers make a smarter decision in farming by giving them the information that they need through the use of an app and a device that is put on the farm. CPH promotes digital entrepreneurship and advocates the development of the country's startup ecosystem by unifying its players and stakeholders towards the community's common goals. Rural Impact Sourcing RIS program also involves training and development of talents in the countryside them to provide IT BPM services while working from home. I am Neil Batayna from Kapatagan Land of the Norte, an online worker. I started online work in the year 2007. I enrolled for college sa Ligan Institute of Technology. Po. Yung papa ko po, farmer po siya. Yun po kung buhay sa amin, natuto akong uh, ani po na palay, tapos magtanim din, tumutulong sa paglagay ng mga similya po ng palay po. Uso pa yun yung Friendster, yun lang yung pinaka malakas na social media site noon. So dun po, nagsimula ang lahat. Isa pong employer, ang um, gusto mag-hire sa akin. I started as a data entry personnel for tnworldwide.com. Yung salary ko po noon is 16,000 po pesos. Malaking tulong po yun sa pamilya ko kasi pag pagbibigay ako ng pera sa mama ko sa papa para rin sa palaya namin. Now, I am the owner of Kapatagan Web Services. Pwede palang gawin dito sa rural with the help sa inyong program po. Kaya yun, napusigi po kami with the help of our mayor na ipuso mag magkaroon ng homegrown DPO dito. Yung mainly in-offer po namin is web developing, social media marketing, uh, lead generation, search engine optimization, both on-page and off-page. Gumagawa rin po kami ng plug-in developing po ngayon. Meron na po ako natulungan ng mga local online worker dito sa kapatagan po. Then, sila para maging social media marketer as a start and then naging search engine optimizer din po sila by my guidance po. Yung basic skills po na kailangan magsimula sa online work is meron kang social media presence sa iyong salili, knowledge in computer, and tech savvy, and also an internet researcher. At least po, high school graduate po. Kaya na po siya. Marami po kami mga kliyente. Kami po na market ng mga services nila. Malaki po na itulong itong online work na rural impact sourcing. Dito sa Kapatagan, malit lang po yung wage o salary. Yung sa online work po, malaki po siya. It's range 8,000 to 50,000 po. Malaki po itong tulong sa isang tao o sa isang worker na nandito lang sa Kapatagan po. Rural Impact Sourcing or RIS aims to promote ICT-enabled jobs as a high-value economic activity in rural communities to be able to make a difference in people's lives through the industry and through this company. It's just invaluable. What talaga yung effect ng ICT, not just only in communication, but also in employment and even entrepreneurship. The most important thing is you must have passion for what you do. If you're doing something that you're not happy with, then there's no really point in continuing. Second is determination. Just keep on doing what you need to do, guys. So just keep on moving to the hard work. Keep doing what is right and what you love. When it comes to online work, it needs dedication and the proper exercise of attitude. My name is, is Michael Oliver de la Pena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I am Brent Shua from Bacolod City, a game developer, startup founder, and a technopreneur. I am Franz Maverick Lorelia. I'm from Davao City, and I am a startup founder. I am Nilin Moderna from Kapatagan Lanao do Norte. I was an online freelancer, and now I am a digital entrepreneur. Wherever you are, 
in the Philippines, there is an opportunity waiting for you. Next Wave Cities. Stepping up the value chain. CPH. Rural Impact Sourcing. And the Department of Information and Communications Technology continues to strive to build more bridges, generate better options, and connect you to the endless possibilities in the world of ICT. Digital PH. Digital opportunities for everyone. Digital PH, enabling digital opportunities for Filipinos. Next Wave Cities. Baguio City is one of the prime locations for IT BPM industry with its constant recognition as one of the top 10 next wave cities in the Philippines since 2011 and one of the top 100 outsourcing destinations globally as recognized by Tholons, the leading strategic advisory firm for global outsourcing research. My name is Michael Oliver Delapena. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon region. I've been working for Cytel for going on 12 years now. I started out in, in 2004 as an agent for the very first account. So I moved through coach track training and became coach, operations manager uh, track training, and then became a manager all the way to where I am now. Back in 2003, going to 2004, when I started with the company, our plans were to, to migrate to, to the US. So my sister-in-law has a nursing home there. But I've always said I wanted my, my kids to grow up in the same city where I grew up in. So I tell this company has given me the opportunity to do just that. Knowing that for every one BPO employee uh, uh, or associate, that there are seven others, uh, either family or friends, that are helped by that, it's even more rewarding than the physical or, or material stuff. The Next Wave Cities program focuses on the creation and development of ICT homes, which will serve as business and innovation centers and investment destinations outside Metro Manila 
thus creating economic opportunities in these areas. Stepping up the value chain. The developments in the game industry evidently shows the growing wider appreciation and interest of students and professionals in games development. I took game design and development in abroad. It's in Paul Sale University. After I graduated, it was quite hard for me to get a job. Shortly after that, I was from the Philippines. So I worked as a contract engineer for a group of companies. Shortly after that, I dedicated some of those time to teach game design and development in our local university here. As a role model, having the opportunity of getting educated from these schools that focuses on games and development, what I can do is share my knowledge, continue teaching these uh, next generation of people who will be driving our economy here in the Philippines. If they could take advantage of those computer skills, they could apply it to their work, bring in more dollars, basically, to the uh, Philippines, our country. The Stepping Up the Value Chain initiative aims to develop the higher value and more complex services capabilities that the country's IT BPM segments could offer. These segments are information technology, healthcare information management, software development, finance and accounting, animation and games development. CPH CPH involves activities to develop startup ideas, skills, and mindset as it conducts different activities to orient the youth on the opportunities to position Philippines as a leading digital economy. I'm French Maverick Loridia. I'm from Davao City. I just graduated from the University of Southeastern Philippines, taking Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering. Right now, we're building a startup called Cloud Farm Innovations. Cloud Farm Innovation is a company that aims to help our Filipino farmers to simplify their lives in agriculture through technology. We see potential in agriculture and that is why we put our interest, our skills and talent to do such a thing that could help farmers to maximize their yield. Right now, our company is developing a product which is a smart IoT sensor and app that allows farmers to maximize their yield through advanced monitoring and analytics of the crop condition. What inspires us to make this startup is we all came from family of farmers and we see a lot of opportunity in agriculture and there's a lot of problems needed to be solved. That is why we build this technology that will help farmers make a smarter decision in farming by giving them the information that they need to the use of an app and a device that is rooted in the farm. CPH promotes digital entrepreneurship and advocates the development of the country's startup ecosystem by unifying its players and stakeholders towards the community's common goals. Impact Sourcing RIS program also involves training and development of talents in the countryside to enable them to provide IT BPM services while working from home. I am Lee Baterna from Kabatagan Lano del Norte, an online worker. I started online work in the year 2007. I enrolled our college sa Ligan Institute of Technology. Po. Yung papa ko po, farmer po siya. Yun po bong buhay sa amin, natuto akong mag-anik uh, na palay, tapos magtanim din, tumutulong sa paglagay ng mga similya po ng palay po. Puso pa yun yung Friendster, yun lang yung pinakamalakas na social media site noon. So dun po, nagsimula ang lahat. Isa pong employer, ang gustong mag-hire sa akin, I started as a data entry personnel for tnworldwide.com. Yung salary ko po noon is 16,000 po pesos. Malaking tulong po yun sa pamilya ko kasi pagpagbibigay ako ng pera sa mama ko, sa papa, para rin sa palaya namin. Now, I am the owner of Kapatagan Web Services. Pwede palang gawin dito 
sa rural with the help sa inyong program po. Kaya ayun, napusigi po kami with the help of our mayor na ipuso mag- magkaroon ng homegrown BPO dito. Yung mainly in-offer po namin is web developing, social media marketing, uh, lead generation, search engine optimization, post on-page and off-page. Gumagawa rin po kami ng plug-in developing po ngayon. Meron po ako natulungan ng mga local online worker dito sa kapatagan po. Sila para maging social media marketer as a start and then naging search engine optimizer din po sila by my guidance po. Yung basic skills po na kailangan magsimula sa online work is meron kang social media presence sa iyong sarili, knowledge in computer, and tech savvy, and also an internet researcher. At least po, high school graduate po. Kaya na po siya. Marami po kaming mga kliyente. Kami po ang market ng mga services nila. Malaki po na itulong itong online work na rural impact sourcing. Dito sa Kapatagan, Malit lang po yung wage o salary. Yung sa online work po, malaki po siya. It's range 8,000 to 50,000 po. Malaki po itong tulong sa isang tao o sa isang worker na nandito lang sa kapatagan po. Rural Impact Sourcing or RIS aims to promote ICT-enabled jobs as a high-value economic activity in rural communities to be able to make a difference in, in people's lives through the industry and through this company. It's just invaluable. Iba talaga yung effect ng ICT, not just only in communication, but also in employment and even entrepreneurship. The most important thing is you must have passion for what you do. If you're doing something that you're not happy with, then there's no really point in continuing. Second is determination. Let's keep on doing what we need to do, guys. So just keep on moving. Do the hard work. Keep doing what is right and what you love. When it comes to online work, it needs dedication and a proper exercise of attitude. So my name is just Michael Goldberg, the Amanda. I'm the Vice President for Operations for Cytel's North Luzon Region. I am Brent Shua from Bacalit City, game developer, startup founder, and a technopreneur. I am Franch Maverick Lorelia. I am from Davao City, and I am a startup founder. I am Nilin Baterna from Kapatagan Lano to Norte. I was an online freelancer, and now I am a digital entrepreneur. Wherever you are in the Philippines, There is an opportunity waiting for you. Next Wave Cities. Stepping up the value chain. Seed PH. Rural Impact Sourcing. And the Department of Information and Communications Technology continues to strive to build more bridges, generate better options, and connect you to the endless possibilities in the world of ICT. Digital PH, digital opportunities for everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How about those in our those watching in FB Live? Can you hear me? 
Yes, good afternoon. Yes, I remain to our participants in uh, Google Meet. You you have to mute your microphone. Please mute your microphone so that there will be no overlapping of our sounds. In a few minutes, we will begin our webinar for this afternoon. I know you are all excited. In two minutes' time, we will begin our webinar for this afternoon. I know you're all excited, as I am also excited. We have a very um, good speaker for this afternoon. I know him personally, and I know that he can um, ace his webinar this afternoon. And he is really fit to speak for our topic this afternoon, which is effective communication for webinars and online meetings. This is very timely, no? This topic is very timely, uh, most especially that um, we are transitioning online. So our classes, our meetings are now being done online. And so um, we should know what are the things that we have to consider when we are in our online classes, in our online meetings, in our webinars. So oh, yes, may I know where are our participants coming from? I believe that we have participants from Cebu City. Right now, I am I am live here in Cebu City. But regardless of location, actually, you're very much welcome here in our webinar for this afternoon. We have participants from Bukidnon. We also have from Quezon City. We have from Bulacan, Tacloban, Iloilo. From Biliran, Maupay, Ma Kulop. We also have from Nueva Ecija. We have from Negros Oriental, my hometown. 
What's up, people in Domsville? Good afternoon sa, sa, sa inyo. Our speaker is from Negros Oriental this afternoon. So we also have from Camarines Norte. All right, I believe it's already two o'clock and our speaker and yes, our speaker is already available. So we will start our webinar this afternoon. So once again, um, a very pleasant afternoon to all of you. I am Joshua Domen. I am your moderator for this afternoon. I am live here in Cebu City right now. But as what I've mentioned, regardless of our location, may you come from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, or may you even come from um, overseas, you are welcome for this uh, webinar this afternoon. So before we begin, let me um, inform you of our webinar house rules for this afternoon. Um, always mute your microphone and video cam to save a bandwidth if you have um, something to tell or you have um, some sentiments or if you have some reactions you can um, type them in in our chat panel or in our chat box and if you also have some questions uh, you can drop them there because we will be accommodating your questions during the q and a um, at the end of this um, afternoon's webinar also, um, there will be um, e-certificates or digital certificates that will be provided after this webinar. But in order for you to receive um, your certificate, you must answer the post-evaluation survey that will be given um, within the webinar. So um, for you to download your certificate, the link is um, shown in our screen. So there will be no more email notification coming from us or there will be no more email reminder for us for you to claim your certificate you just have to check this link shown in your screen right now from time to time um, within two to three weeks so that you can download your certificate and once again no evaluation means no certificate um, please enjoy the webinar and please do like our facebook page that's at the ICT FOO VC2. We are live both in Google Meet and in Facebook. So, hello to everyone, um, whatever the platform you are using. Um, we, your questions will still be accommodated. Oh, we also have our um, former director of the ACT Besides Cluster 2, also tuning in to our Facebook Live, Sir Loloy or Bistondo. How are you, sir? Kumusta na ang ating pagtatagalog dyan sa central office ng DICT? All right. Good sir. All right. So to start our webinar this afternoon, we have here our provincial officer of the ICT Negros Oriental. Um, let me call on Engineer Aurelio Tinapay. Go ahead, sir. Please do the honors. Thank you, Josh. First, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our former director, Director Leo Bistondo. Good afternoon, sir. Also, our uh, Director and VC2, Frederick D.C. Amores, the Cluster Director of EICT Visayas Cluster 2. The members of the team uh, composed in this webinar, uh, headed by Mr. Joshua Domen. Thank you, Josh. The DICT officials, staff, participants, students, teachers, instructors, the guests and professionals, and the support of the ICT Association of Tumagetti, the President, Ms. Hussein Lou Bascara, and the Executive Director, Ms. Dana Portonato. Thank you for your support. All of us know that we are struggling to adapt to live in the new normal. And one of the significant things for us to be harmonized in any organization is the use of effective communication 
So prior to the pandemic, there are a lot of experts in communicating one another in a normal way. But along the way, there comes an aberration that leads towards the new direction or the new normal, which is a challenge for all of us. A communication mixed with the use of technology. Having this tool is a mass to bind together, as this is now the struggle for most of us amidst the pandemic, especially in the academy. <clears throat> and so in this afternoon session, is one of the best opportunity for us to listen and learn from the expert tips and tools and techniques on how to communicate effectively in conducting a webinar or any online meetings. May God bless us all, stay safe, keep safe, and good luck. Thank you very much, Sir Aye, and also keep safe ni Mudiha. Kumusta naman atong dakbayan sa Dumaguete? Uh, still safe. <laughs> still safe, yes. I've, I've never been home for five months already. <laughs> So, kita so we miss you, Jess. We miss you here, Jess. We'll be there soon. Thank you, Sir Aye, for providing the opening remarks and also for actually spearheading no, this topic for this afternoon, which is very much um, timely sa atong um, yes. pandemic that we are experiencing. Thank you very much once again, Sir Aye. Okay, thank Thanks you, Jess. Take it away. For the information of everyone, um, we have 2,000. We received 2,264 respon responses from our um, registration form, and 70.9% is female, while around 30% is actually male. And the affiliation includes um, most of you, most of our participants for this afternoon are actually teachers, around 37% are teachers, followed by students at 9.5%. But we also have participants with affiliations that are unemployed, a single parent, affected by COVID-19, underemployed, and government employees, and persons with disabilities. But regardless of your affiliations, you're very much welcome here in our webinar this afternoon. So our age range for our participants include from the youngest is 16 years old and the eldest is 65 years old. So welcome. Once again, and all of our um, regions are well represented. We have participants coming from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. But um, we also have participants overseas. So we have OFWs and even other nationalities who are joining us for this afternoon. We have um, particip participants from Poland, Oman, Thailand, from India. We also have from Indonesia and we also have from Nepal. So welcome and mabuhay to all of you who are here and who are joining us right now. Okay. So before I introduce the speaker, um, this is a public service announcement. We already have a new um, uh, regional director of the ICT Region 7 and 8, and that is um, Director Frederick D.C. Amores, while our um, former director, that's Sir Loloy, who is also actually watching right, us right now in Facebook Live, um, he is already in um, the central office of the ICT in Quezon City. Okay, so I will now introduce the speaker. I am excited. Um, he is, or he completed his Master of Business Administration in Negros Oriental State University, or NORSU, in Dumaguete City. He has also completed his um, 33 units of Doctor of Business Administration from St. Paul University, Dumaguete, also my alma mater. And he is actually a, a candidate for graduation for um, DBA. He is a registered estate planner and financial uh, consultant and he is a certified white and yellow belter of Six Sigma. He is currently the manager of the leadership and performance excellence of Inspiro and Infocom Dumaguete and he has over 10 years of training experiences in accent and, com and English communications and product training and also 
I know he is a YouTuber right now. He has his own channel. And there are a lot of followers already. And I'm sure that he, um, a lot of subscribers will um, flock in after today's webinar. So I won't um, keep you waiting. Please help me welcome with your virtual applause our speaker for this afternoon, Mr. Jerul D. Sibala. Go ahead, Sir Jerul, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Josh. Can you hear me? Yes, Sir Jerul, loud and clear. All right, so yeah, thank you very much. That's truly overwhelming, and thank you for that very wonderful introduction. Um, let me share quickly my slide. Give me a sec. Oh, Ethan is presenting. Reminders to everyone, please do not, uh, pl please refrain from sharing. Siguro by accident lang, no? But um, mm. please refrain from sharing. But go ahead, sir, uh, Jerol. Maybe ask uh, Miss Ethel Antalan to uh, stop presenting. Ayan. Go ahead, sir, Jerol. All right. I hope you can now see my slide. Yes, yes, we can. All right. Thank you very much. Again, um, Sir Josh, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful introduction. And again, um, let me um, acknowledge um, Sir Aurelio Tinapay, Sir, again, once again, uh, Sir Joshua Domen. Um, I'm Sue Bascara. Thank you very much for the opportunity and also to Miss Dana Fortunato. And to all the ICT staff who are with us today, thank you very much for um, having me and inviting me as one of um, or as your speaker for today. Um, well, that's true. You, you mentioned earlier, Josh, that um, I'm a YouTube blogger and I love doing it because I love sharing what I know most especially about the English language. Um, during your introduction, I think you mentioned that I have over 10 years um, experience specifically in accent and communications English. And so I put that to practice uh, via YouTube to inspire others and to help others specifically in our pursuit towards global competitiveness. So um, in my YouTube channel, uh, I specifically put emphasis on the, the importance of English as our competitive advantage. And in the business world, we love to put it that way, um, competitive advantage, because that is our way of excelling in whatever um, in whatever endeavor, whatever journey no, we're, gonna, we're taking. So I'm cordially inviting everyone to, <clears throat> excuse me, to subscribe or to like or to comment in my on my YouTube channel, um, that, that is so we would be able to um, reach out to more people who need uh, the English training. And especially Josh, I'm happy to note that majority of our learners today are teachers, and true enough that they, they are all influencers. No, so I hope that you can um, inspire others through my uh, my videos on YouTube specifically in the English language. But my task today is not to talk about the English language. And I mean, personally, I believe that's very important, but equally important, uh, I'm gonna talk about how we can effectively um, facilitate webinar sessions and online training. So our objectives for today include, number one, uh, we're going to identify the steps in leading effective meeting. Um, before I proceed, just want to make sure that you, you all have um, a pen and a paper with you ready because I'll be giving you some helpful tips that you can um, use and you can bring back as your pasalubong to your um, students since majority of our learners today are teachers. And then secondly, we're gonna overcome behavioral challenges when facil facilitating a meeting. Because um, So we'll be talking about a lot of behavioral challenges um, for our, uh, our participants. So actually we'll be talking about behavioral challenges. I'm gonna put emphasis as well on those different behavior behavioral challenges. And then we're going to recognize the common problems in webinar sessions. Um, so we'll talk about uh, technical problems, how we can improve engagement, 
So we'll, we'll also talk about that. And also, we're going to highlight tips to increase to increase webinar engagement. So these are our four objectives for today. And uh, my appeal to all the participants today is to lend me your ears in the next uh, perhaps one hour and 30 minutes, and we'll make sure that this is gonna be a productive and a worthwhile session for everyone. And if you have questions, by all means, you can um, type in your questions in our chat box. And I'd be more than happy to try to address whatever query or whatever question you may have. For um, the session, allow me to jumpstart my discussion by giving emphasis on how we can facilitate meetings and discussions. And I'm going to share with you a framework that I came across online. Um, and I've been putting it to practice and I've been preaching and teaching our leaders here in Infocom and in Spiro. Um, about how they can effectively and efficiently facilitate meetings. But before I share or I discuss further, allow me to inform everyone, especially those who are in Dumaguete, um, that we are actually in need of some people who or some agents to support our local and international accounts. So if you are interested, you can send in your resume or you can apply via our FB page in Spiro Dumaguete. But as what I've mentioned, we have been preaching and we've been sharing to our um, leaders, specifically with this framework and model on how we can effectively facilitate meetings and discussions. All right. So let me introduce, hold on. Okay, so um, let's stress out first the problems with most of the meetings. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you three common problems when we are facilitating meetings. The first is I'm sure you would all agree with me, and you can type in me in our chat box if you have experienced attending a webinar session that is boring. Can you type it? Type me if you've experienced attending a webinar session that is boring. And we don't want that. I mean, I do, we don't want to experience that. <laughs> Personally, with the current situation with a, at the height, height of pandemic, um, we are having our classes in our, doc, uh, in our DBA course or doctorate in, doctor in business administration online. And it's kind of challenging because according to research, and you should know this, that our attention to detail will start to deteriorate after 30 minutes. So take note of that. After 30 minutes, our attention to detail will start to deteriorate. So why, why am I telling you this? It is highly recommended that we, we advocate and we inject that what we call brief diversion. And brief diversion can dramatically affect um, that attention to detail. No? Um, just to prove my, uh, my premise that the, in the first 30 minutes, we, we may be very attentive to it, but after 30 minutes, our attention to details may start to deteriorate. Um, I'm not sure if you've felt this one, uh, that you've tried to put in a, or to use your old clothes probably, and it it fits perfectly. And probably in the first 30 minutes, you may feel uncomfortable. Maybe we've gained weight, gained weight at the height of this pandemic. So in the first 30 minutes, you may feel that, is it, it, I mean, one of the two things may happen. No? You have, it may be one, you have gained weight. Or secondly, your shirt may have shrank. I'm not sure, but but in the first 30 minutes, you may be very attentive to details and you, you will feel uncomfortable. But after 30 minutes, your attention to detail is going to start to deteriorate. So, okay na siguro after 30 minutes. So, take note of that if you're facilitating online classes, you have to believe in brief diversion as it can dramatically affect um, that attention to detail. All right, so boring, that's one. Another is time wasting. Um, we may have the fundamental tendency to go around in circle. 
So when we are facilitating a meeting online, we have to make sure, I mean, I'm going to share with you later on through the model that I'll be introducing, how we can ensure that our meeting is effective in addition to efficient. And I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, are already aware no, of the differences between efficiency and effectiveness. Is that right? Yes, type yes if you're familiar with the dif uh, with the differences. What's okay? That's good. Um, he, Hillary Joe said yes. Michael said yes. I think everybody knows the differences between effectiveness. But for the benefit of those who don't know, effectiveness is to the outcome or to the result, right? And when we're talking about the efficiency, we're talking about the budget, we're talking about the time, and on. So for example, uh, for it to make perfect sense, if for example, I have 1,000 pesos and I ask you to decorate this room, okay? I ask you to decorate this room within the week. So if, for example, the result is astounding, too beautiful for words, so you are effective. But if you went beyond the budget of 1,000 pesos, then you are inefficient because you that's beyond our, the, the budget, right? Or if you were not able to deliver it within the week, probably in two weeks' time you were able to deliver it, then, but the result is astounding, then you are effective but inefficient. So when we're talking about efficiency, so when we're talking about efficiency, um, we're talking about the time and the budget. And if we're talking about effectiveness, we're talking about the result or the outcome. Okay, just want to make sure that everybody we're all calibrated in terms of our understanding in if if in those terminologies. So in going back to when we are facilitating meeting, um, we have to be effective, that's number one, and equally important, we have to be efficient. Okay, so that's our goal. So we should never, and as much as possible, we have to maximize the time allotted for the meeting. So unfortunately, that's another problem in, uh, in some of the meetings that I've attended to, we have wasted a lot of um, time. And lastly, uh, there are a lot of meetings also that I have attended to that didn't really have that sense of direction. So in as much as possible, through the framework that I'll be sharing with you, um, so we would be able to address that. But again, I'm sure you would all agree with me that we don't want to participate in a meeting that is boring, time-wasting, and also without any direction. So allow me to share with you a framework that you can use to lead effective and efficient meeting or effect, effective discussions. So number one, all right, I think everybody's ready, no? Um, so step one is you have to set the stage. The first thing that we have to do would be to set the stage. And in this particular phase, we create, we establish the, the agenda of the meeting, as well as set the meeting logist, logistics. So these are usually sent to the participants before the actual meeting. So what are inclusives of the meeting agenda? In the meeting agenda, you will have to send in the details of what the meeting is for and the specific topics or items that will be discussed in the meeting. And in addition to the agenda, we'll also send the meeting logistics. The meeting logistics include the time, the date, the venue, and the participants of the meeting. And to those who are using um, Outlook, you can use your calendar invite via Outlook. But step number one, when you are facilitating a meeting, you have to have the meeting agenda and you have to have that meeting logistics. So you have to set the stage, okay? Second, after setting the stage, we have to provide the structure. The next step is to provide structure. And here in this particular phase, we will ensure that during the actual meeting, we stick to our goal and we accomplish what we have set out to do in the meeting. So what do we include in, uh, in this particular phase when we are providing structure? Number one, it with our, you start with an opening statement or you can start with the greeting or introduction if that's necessary. And in most meetings, and also when you're facilitating a session, it's highly recommended that you 
um, inject or you, you can start with icebreakers. Icebreakers, you can think of any um, icebreakers like a, um, or, or you can divide them into particular groups and they'll have to work on, into something, but you can, you can be creative in your, um, in, in your icebreaker activity. And you can also review of, uh, you can review the previous meet, minutes of the meeting, you can review the uh, agenda for the current meeting, and then the setting of roles. So later on, we'll talk about the, the various roles too. And then after you open the session, you can proceed with the discussion proper. And in this particular um, phase, you have to ensure participation of everyone. So it's kind of challenging. Um, it's kind of challenging because, um, especially when we're doing when we're doing it in a webinar platform, no, because we don't see you, um, we, we don't see everyone, and they're what we consider. We, we consider multitaskers, and as I speak before you, also may be engrossed into something else, maybe doing doing a lot uh, a lot of things. So that makes it more challenging. So I'll give you tips later on how you can get how you can improve the engagement of the participants when we are facilitating webinar session. And lastly, and lastly, we have to proceed with conclusion. So in this particular phase, we review uh, the action items and we send the minutes of the meeting. Question, I have a question for everyone. How many hours should we be sending the minutes of the meeting? You can type it. How many how many hours should we be sending the minutes of the meeting? If you are uh, tasked to send in the minutes of the meeting, one day after two to five hours, after four hours, two hundred twenty four hours, <laughs> thirty thirty minutes. All right, actually a day later actually it's not a day later it's not the next day at least one day after the meeting four hours okay actually we're we're kind naman um yung mga recipients are, are kind of kind and understanding but you can send the minutes of the meeting within 24 hours that's two four within 24 hours one hour if urgent. All right. So, so you, you have to send the minutes of the meeting within 24 hours. So we, we started with setting the stage. P is to provide structure. Next is O. We have to overcome challenges. Now, there are a lot of behavioral challenges, and I want you to take note of this because you will be you will ultimately experience this when you are facilitating an online class. So this step ensures that throughout the duration of the meeting, everyone is involved and is focused on, on the meeting. And so I'm going to share with you the common behavioral challenges that most leaders would encounter. And, and should overcome in a meeting. Hold on, let me switch my camera on so you can see me too. All right, I hope you can see me now. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what we like. Magikita ang speaker. Okay. Uh, oh, so I, at this point, no, it is my privilege and honor to hand over. Although you've got it already, but um, Josh, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. So as what I've mentioned, I want you to pay extra attention to this because you will have to deal with these different um the the, the different behaviors of our participants. So number one. Um, number one is the dominator. You know what a dominator is? Have you experienced facilitating a meeting with dominators? Yes, yes. I'm sure I'm sure you have experienced that. Um, for the benefit of those who are unsure who are the dominators, these folks take over the conversation. And they share at length, they have an opinion about every topic, and they take up valuable time. So when you are facilitating a meeting, they can probably 
they they can probably yeah that's right very opinionated uh, opinionated yes apple in short and that's true and whether we like it or we like it you will have to deal with the dominators <laughs> pabida pa jolly be sir actually <laughs> self centered yep I'm sure you have experienced a lot of people who are like this um, because we are just different. We are we have different background, we have different culture, we have different tradition, we have different um, education. We have we are just different, and we have to understand that there will always be dominators in when you are facilitating a meeting or when you're facilitating a class, right? So there's a dominator. There's also a naysayer. Have you heard of it, of this word? You can, you can pronounce it naysayer or you can pronounce it naysayer. Yes, no, 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 not yet. Okay, so this is an addition to your vocabulary. Naysayer. Okay, naysayer. They always argue every point, whether it's big or small, and they argue with everyone. That is correct, Jos Jocelyn. They are the pessimists. They always have something negative to say. Correct. Argumentative people. That is correct. Patola, <laughs> according to Joel. That is correct. And there will always be participants who are naysayers, they always have something negative. Maybe because I came across an article, I just want to share with you, as I love reading. I came across an article and I specifically quote, and I will never forget it, that our view of the world has the fundamental tendency to tilt on the negatives. Um, one common example, if for exa example, uh, someone snapped at you and then you snap back and you snap at the next person right so we were trained to be like that even when we were in elementary or in high school and and especially to the teachers here you have to you have to understand that we we have to understand and to practice how to work to see the upside what that means is according to katriona we have to work uh, to see the beauty in or to to, to see situations in a silver lining. You know? But again, just want to stress it out to everyone that our view of the world has a fundamental tendency to tilt on the negative. And it literally demands that we have to work to see the upside. So there is silver lining, correct? But, and that's true. We always see, the right? you always say, um, maganda pero, uh, mabait pero. Right? We always say, say something like that. Because we were trained to be like that, no? So we have to work to see the, the beauty and work to see that situation in a silver lining. So there, there are always um, naysayers. Mga naysayers, they always have neg something negative to say. So unfortunately, may mga ganyan. And then there's also finder of faults. Correct, that is correct, according to April. Yep, that is correct. Grace from, from the word nay, meaning no ne negative, correct. Has an I on flaws, that is correct. That is correct. Okay, so in addition to um, the naysayer, there's also, when, when you're facilitating a meeting or a class online, there's also silent but deadly. Who are the silent and deadly? They are those who say nothing. They are actually probably right now because um, we have over 100 participants in Google Meet and I'm not sure uh, on Facebook. But um, some the, the silent and, but deadly may not be that responsive. They say nothing and you just don't know whether it's because they are shy or they have no opinion or they are daydreaming or they're planning how to be my worst nightmare <laughs> Nasa loob ang kulo. they circulate things before speaking up yes so silent but deadly hopeful okay lang na silent wag lang deadly no <laughs> all right okay thank you the silent bombs, that is correct. 
<laughs> All right, next. We also have to consider the rabbit trailblazer. You know what a rabbit trailblazer is? A rabbit trailblazer. Free thinkers. What do you think about rabbit trailblazer? Or is it your first time hearing this um, behavior? Type away. Is it your first time? Yeah. Unstoppable. The one who influences others. First time. Okay, sige. Carry lang pag first time. Allow me to share with you what do they do. You know what? Uh, for, for rabbits, they cannot... They cannot run, um, or I don't know if they're jumping or running, but they cannot do it in a perfect straight line. No, they have to. Um, they cannot do it in a perfect straight line. So the rabbit trailblazers always have a lot of ideas, uh, many of which are not relevant to the discussion, and they lead the team down a path or many paths that end you up further away from where you needed to be than before the meeting ever started. So, sa, tag, sa Bisaya pa, morang maghalo-halo because of a lot of ideas coming from rabbit trailblazers. So, I'm sure you have experienced this na when you're facilitating a class or a meeting, ang daming ideas coming in, pero unfortunately, there are some ideas that don't really make sense. Parang, um, it's it's different. Um, parang walang sense, no? Or it's not relevant to the topic. So, as facilitator, you have to know how to ensure that uh, that we get back on. Because uh, the rabbit trailblazers have the tendency to derail the discussion, no? So, as a facilitator, it's your responsibility to ensure uh, we get back on track, especially when rabbit trailblazers attack. No? And lastly, I'm sure a lot of you are like this. I, I don't generalize to, but there are a lot of you who are multitaskers. I remember when I was attending one of my classes uh, last week, I believe so. One of my one of my classmates said na they were while they were listening to the speaker, they were also cooking something. So that's a multi uh, that's a task of a multitasker. That's the job of a multitasker. So their eyes, for the multitaskers, their eyes are on phones, tablets, and various other devices. And they may appear busy, but they are actually not engaged in the conversation. According to Ken, they appear busy, but not engaged. That is correct. Due to the demand of our job. <laughs> Okay. Um. Actually, um, our jobs are too demanding. No, but we can actually talk about to talk to Sir Josh about how you would be able to manage your time to be able to manage your stress because inability to manage your time would result to more stress. But just like the law of supply and demand, about more more supply, less demand, or less supply would result to more de more demands. Right. The same concept can be applied in time and stress. If you have more time, that will result to less stress. If you have less time, that will result to more stress. So the key is to have that control of your time to be able to manage your stress. And probably we can talk to Sir Josh about a future webinar session, how you, can, you would be able to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. I understand um, we have a lot of webinars now overlapping, and, and that's true. The key is to be able to man, to man, to identify the urgency and importance of tasks. So yun lang naman. Um, so you should know how to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. But going back, um, as what I mentioned, we can coordinate with Sir Josh about the future session in relation to to that ability to manage your time to be able to manage your stress. So be, we can schedule that um, in, in future dates. But you have to know how to overcome these behavior, different behaviors, the dominator, the naysayer, the silent but deadly, the rabbit trailblazer, and the multitaskers. You have any questions um, with these 
uh, various behaviors before we proceed with a step uh, with step four. Yeah, according to Rachel, correct. No questions. All right. Guys, if you have questions, by all means, you can type in in our chat box. So we'd be able to address and uh, find answer to your questions. All right. So yeah. Okay, let's move on to step number four. When you, uh, this is the last step, and this is to ensure that whatever commitments were agreed on during the meeting would become a reality through follow-up and updating of the MOM. Okay, so you include the follow-up dates, so you track commitment and, pro and progress, and that's what I've mentioned, you have to circulate the MOM within 24 hours after meeting was adjourned, and provide feedback and also to realign. So going back to our spot model in, if in facilitating effective and efficient discussion, you have to set the stage, provide structure, overcome challenges, and lastly, to track commitment and progress. Okay, you have any questions for a spot before I share with you the problems now when we are facilitating meeting through online platform or we're doing webinar sessions? No questions? All right, good. Loud and clear, none so far. All right. Now, let me share with you the common problems when we are facilitating webinar. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. And as what I've mentioned earlier, in the first 30 minutes, our attention to details is, it's kind of, it, it's there, but after 30 minutes, it's, it's starting to deteriorate. So by now, it's over 30 minutes. Just want to make sure that you're still with me. Can you type yes in our chat box if you're still with me because we have over 100 participants. So I expect madaming yes dapat. <laughs> All right, good. One technique, according to Ken, one technique is to avoid dead air. That is correct. We have to ensure that we are spontaneous when we're facilitating meeting. No, um, it's kind of challenging, especially when you're facilitating meeting and you your medium of communication is English. So, so I'm exhorting, encouraging everyone to improve on your uh, English communication skill. So it's it's easier said than done, but practice makes what. Practice makes perfect. Actually, not perfect because no one's perfect, right? Practice makes permanent. Permanent, not perfect. All right, so it takes practice. We have to keep practicing. Um, so if you want to learn more about the English language, you can always check my YouTube channel. I have a playlist there for free webinars with the SVA, with the various rules in the English language. Um, siguro mga two minutes, mga two minutes na, na video that you can learn from. We talk about homophones, we talk about um, SVA rules, we talk about infinitive phrase, and a lot more. So you can, you can, you can visit my YouTube channel and you can share it to your students pretty please if you can share it to your student because our goal is to produce siguro mga qualified students especially right now at the height of um, siguro, techno technological breakthroughs we, uh, we are we have a lot of job opportunities in the BPO industry. So hopefully you can help us. And what's keeping our economy right now afloat is because of the BPO, the emergence of BPO um, industry in the Philippines. So because everybody, everyone gets affected. And in the BPO, I think we're continuously ramping up. All right. So let's continue. Let's talk about the various problems now in terms of facilitating webinar or OLT or online training. Okay, number one, the first problem when we are facilitating webinar is to promote the right, uh, using the right channel and the right time. 
So much, much of the webinar success comes down to the success of the promotions. And it's no wonder finding the right promotional mix is a top challenge. And according to survey, businesses found the most effective channels for webinar promotions to be. Number one is email. So that's an effective um, channel to promote webinar. Number two is partner or co-marketing. Number three, employee or personal networks. And then the least effective channels in terms of promoting your webinar session would include number one, Facebook and Twitter. And that's according to survey. Um, so email by hands down is the best channel for webinar promotion. And you may also want to take advantage of your um, the, the partners and employees social networks the wide read. You can give them promotional pieces to share on their profiles. And then, um, now that we have the right channel mix, it's time to get the timing right. So I'm going to share with you four simple rules to maximize your promotion, promotion schedule. Um, number one, you have to start promotion four weeks before your webinar. Four weeks. And there are, there's a steady flow of registration three to four weeks prior to the live event. Secondly, take note of this. You can promote on Tuesday to th uh, um, Tuesday to Tuesday. On tu you can promote on Tuesday, and Tuesdays attract the most registrants. So the best day to promote is Tuesday. And then you can send your invite early in the morning. And according to the research that I came across. Re registrations spike between 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And lastly, you can increase promotion one week before the webinar. And according to survey, again, 69% of registrations occur the week before the event, and with 33% of registrations occurring the day before the webinar. So I'm not sure if this is applicable to everyone, but in the event that you're planning for a webinar session, the best day to promote is Tuesday, and the best time to send invite via email is at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. All right. Next challenge, and I'm sure you can all relate to this. And at many points with the number of online classes and sessions that I've participated in the past, I have experienced this too many times, and I'm talking about technical glitches, technical haywire, and technical issues. Can you, who amongst you here are experiencing this? Me? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you. Actually, siguro karun, as I speak before you all, a lot of you may be having challenges with the, uh, with the internet or with a headset. No? Ako personally, when I'm facilitating on-site, I'm facilitating a class on-site, I always require my participants to show their faces on cam. Can we do that? All right. Diba? Very good. And we're poor connection. <laughs> a lot of you really look beautiful. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for showing your faces. And I, again, as what I've mentioned, I require my participants to use their cams, they do, to have um, microphones on, but they have to, 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 to put it on mute. But, nakapambahay lang po, sorry po. It's okay, no problem. All right. But you can show your, show out your beautiful faces. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure you all can relate to this one, no? uh, working through technical issues. And webinar organizers always want to know how to get through technical issues should they arise and make sure they know how to work the webinar controls. And according to the survey, again, done online, the top challenge when it comes to actually hosting the, a webinar is navigating the control panel and interacting with panelists. And this is an easy challenge to overcome the key to this the key to this is you have to it's very simple plan ahead 
just like mm -hmm. earlier, prior to the session, I had a meeting with Sir Joshua to ensure that we will never be experiencing technical issues or technical glitches. So we planned ahead. So the day before your webinar, you have to have all organizers and panelists log into the webinar. And we can do sound checks, we can tweak lightings at all broad, uh, broadcast locations, practice passing the presenter role, launch polls, and make sure all participants know how to mute and unmute themselves. And I'm sure you all you all know how to mute yourselves, right? But I, I'm hearing a lot na may nagsasalita. <laughs> okay, so... The key to this is you just have to plan ahead, no? So, dapat may mga, kung sa, sa stage before, may mga dress rehearsal. They call it dress rehearsal. So, same with our webinar session. We also have to prepare and to plan ahead to ensure that we don't experience technical glitches or technical issues. Next, the next challenge, I'm sure you all can relate to this too. Um, to all the teachers here, we will soon be facilitating online classes, and you have to anticipate this, and you will have you will ultimately experience this. A challenge in terms of engaging the audience. Correct? Correct? <laughs> yes? Absolutely, yes, correct. That is correct. So what can we do to engage our participants? So you've done all the work to drive attendees. Now it's time to compel or to give them compelling or edu educational content that they'll remember. The key to engaging your audience is not to talk at them or talk. You have to talk with them. We, have, we can use the tools like polls or surveys and then you can you can use that raise hand feature or annotations or q a to stir interest and get your audience to participate in the webinar that's why you notice um in the in um in the first 50 minutes of our discussion, I always ask you to type something. And that is because I want everyone's engagement and everyone's participation, right? And that's the key to engage. One of the keys that I can share with you how you can engage your audience. In addition, your visuals also make a big difference in audience in engagement. Um, later on, I'll, I'm going to share with you some of the tools that we can use uh, to include videos, striking images, um, and don't be afraid to get on your webcam when you are presenting. Audiences will more likely connect with a face than a dis disembodied voice, and that's why I had to show my face earlier. Okay, and dapat you have to dapat when you're presenting, hindi yung nakapang bahay ha. <laughs> Next oh, like, stretch, Sister Jesse. I can see you from here. <laughs> okay, so again, you have to engage your audience because as what I've mentioned, first 30 minutes, attentive yung mga agents, mga participants natin, but after 30 minutes, it will ultimately die down. So it will start to deteriorate. So dapat you have to keep them engaged. You ask them questions, ask challenging questions, ganon. Let me share with you what Iris said. One of the advices given to me by the year-level coordinator is to make it fun or give some jokes to the students. It is just like online selling daw. Wag daw masyadong serious sa pagtuturo. And I agree. Pero depende ha, kasi not everyone is gifted with that skill. Kasi when you're cracking jokes, dapat it's nakakatawa talaga. Kasi if pagpilit, um, it can also give... It can also bore them. So, according to Jocelyn, if you're presenting, would it be okay if you don't show yourself? It's okay not to show yourself, but it's better if you show yourself because it can enhance the engagement of your participants. Okay. According to Lovely, our college professors use icebreakers pero relate sa topic. It's, pero be careful ha, when you are um, injecting icebreakers, you have to make sure that you stick with the time because icebreakers can be too, 
dragging as well. Now, for example, you're just allotting five minutes for the icebreaker. So by hook or by crook, you have to be able to complete that activity in five minutes' time. All right? Because the goal natin is to be yeah, you can insert a trivia. Um, yung what works best, you can also include an activity yung scavenger hunt. You can you can squeeze that in too. All right. So engaging, that's one of the uh, siguro pinaka top na challenge when you're facilitating a webinar session or OLT online training. That's to engage your agent. All right. Um, for challenge number four, uh, I think this is not, I mean, only this is only applicable for mga the, the ICT or yung mga uh, departments that coordinate with uh, um, or that facility or organ departments that organize the, the session, no? capturing the registration. It's kind of challenging too, but what I normally do, um, we ask them to write their employee numbers, employee names in the chat box, so we'll be able to monitor. But luckily for DICT, my, uh, I think you all have registered prior to the session, so we can easily track participation. Huh? What if I don't have a good speaking voice? Mm, that's a very good question. Then it, as what I've mentioned, practice makes permanent right so you have to you have to practice you have to modulate your voice clarity is everything never mind the voice but it, it your voice can also help in in terms of the engagement so you work your voice you can modulate it you, you record your voice practice makes permanent Yeah, uh, pacing is very important too. Don't be too fast nor too slow. So you have to, yeah, that's why you have to practice. Um, you can record your voice. And luckily right now, madali lang naman i-record ang voice. You can just uh, record it using your camera phones. And then you you let someone assess the pacing. Is it too fast? Is it too slow? You you can You can ask anyone or your friend without being biased for an honest feedback. All right, next, um, let's move on. Um, another challenge is choosing a winning title. So picking an attention-grabbing title is critical. And all the promotion in the world won't matter if your webinar You can try different A formula and it has to stir interest in terms of creating or choosing a winning title. Pero sa ano sa DepEd, I think you uh, it's not applicable because I'm correct me if I'm wrong because you already have um, you already have the module name ganon. So so I'm, I'm not sure how DepEd, DepEd works. Um, according to Lovely Stage Fright, yeah, it's kind of normal and according to survey. Yung pinaka na pin, sorry, pinaka hadlukan sa tao is not actually death, but it's about it's actually stage fright. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to it, no? But it again, practice makes permanent. So it 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 requires practice. So you have to keep practicing because whether we like it or we like it, this is the new normal now. And and whether I mean, if you have stage fright, you have to face that fear for you to be effective. <laughs> Every time na magahawak ng microphone, nanginginig na. I can relate because I used to be like that. Um, but the key is to face your fear. You have to acknowledge your fear and do something about it. Wag naman. Um, um, you can research further <clears throat> about growth mindset. No, um, you can research on YouTube about growth mindset. I'm not sure if you've heard about growth mindset. Have you heard? Growth mindset. The opposite of growth mindset is fixed mindset. <laughs> mm. 
like you can grow from experience. Yeah. <clears throat> Please elaborate. Okay, I'm going to share with you a sto my, my personal story huh, about growth mindset because I love telling stories. When I was complete when I was completing my uh, MBA program in Norsu, um, admittedly, I wasn't really good with math. You know, math really is my worst nightmare. Siguro. It was kasi past na siya. And so in one of my one of the subjects, it was I think it was financial management. Yeah, financial management. And I was I really screwed up in terms of math, no. But I was you know how masters you know, pag nag master al ka, um, you're just provided with a topic and and you will have to select a topic and then you will present it, right? So it took me a lot of sleepless nights. Um, to get to know more about the topic that I chose. And I chose the mo yung, bang, yung topic na I was having difficulty with. Um, I think it was about the different formulae of <coughs> financial management. So but so it took me a lot, a lot of sleepless nights. I stayed a lot of so so much time so library and browsing through the net to, to get to know more about the, the different formulae. So by now, um, you can ask me anything about IRR, internal rate of return, average rate of return, future value, present value, mga ganon. Um, I think I think I can I can answer that in as easy as ABC para ganon. So and who would have thought that because of that growth mindset voice in me and and I face that fear and as I speak before you all that has opened that opportunity has opened or is that. Learning has opened opportunity for me to become a registered financial consultant or a, to be a registered estate planner and a financial consultant. So you see, if you believe in growth in, in every opportunity, then the, you will definitely you will definitely grow, you will definitely um, mature and develop your skill. So we I highly encourage everyone here to believe in growth mindset. If you can research uh, about that on YouTube, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube about, about growth mindset. And why am I telling you this? Um, if you are having challenges, if you're having stage fright, um, you have to believe in growth mindset, um, and you have to face that. And that opportunity can land you to better opportunities, can give you better opportunities. That's correct. Ria said, "Open to learning." If you are specializing in English, don't limit opportunities in English. If you are specializing math, don't limit your um, specialization in math. You have to keep exploring because the world is so big out there. So you, that is what growth mindset growth mindset is. That is correct. Widen, widening your horizon. All right. According to Richie, madami ako natututunan today. Thank you very much, Richie. <clears throat> All right, let's continue. Um, another challenge in terms of uh, facilitating webinar is measuring success. So how do we measure success? Unfortunately, you cannot measure success if you don't know what it looks like. So in the early planning stages, you have to decide on your key performance indicators or KPI. I'm not sure if you've heard about KPI or the key performance indicators. And some of, here are some of the common webinar K KPIs. Number one would include registration. Uh, number two is attendance rate. Number three is attendee engagement score. Um, number of qualified leads generated pipeline revenue. Um, in the case of the teachers, it can be the participation or, or the, um, the 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 score of the age of, of the students after the exam. So that can be your key, key performance indicator. So that's how you measure success. And lastly, driving greater value. Um, so how do you continue to generate leads after the live webinar? Uh, one of the best way to continue lead Continue lead generation is to repurpose your webinar. And it would include, number one, you can record your live webinar and offer an on-demand on version. Um, you can create multiple blog posts from the content shared during the webinar. Um, you can record your presentation and you can upload it on your YouTube channel. You can create an ebook. You can create short how-to videos. 
Um, with your first webinar, these challenges seem like a big deal, but as you do more and more webinars, the solutions become second nature and be too busy raking in the sales to notice to notice them. So, um, as, right, like right now, I'm actually recording this video so I'd be able to upload it as well on, on my YouTube channel so we can also revisit this. Okay. Any questions with some of the problems? I'm sure you all can relate to this, especially. I'm sure I'm sure you all can, can relate to this, especially in terms of the technical issues and, and engaging your audience. Is that right? Yes. Do you agree? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Okay, so our goal today is to put emphasis on how we can engage, we can improve engagement, no? So engagement from our students, from our participants when we are doing um, OLT. OLT is online training. All, uh, OLT is the same with webinar, right? OLT. So how do we improve and how can we improve uh, or how can we increase webinar engagement so number one number one is you have to learn to read the virtual body, body language and cues so how can we do that i, I don't see you <laughs> i can't see everyone unfortunately because we have over 100 participants today and it's kind of challenging no especially when you're doing webinar session with a lot of participants so how can we read virtual body language and cues. What can we do is we can use the feedback mechanism provided in the tool. Um, most virtual classroom products offer yes or no ch or check buttons or tools for showing a raise hand, polls, etc. Just like what we're doing right now, um, I, I ask everyone to type in and to comment in our chat box. Um, that is correct, Ken. Engagement. Always ask your agents or your audience. You you engage, and never discredit their presence. And it makes it makes a webinar session more challenging. And to be honest with you all, webinar session is a, a lot more challenging than doing that face to face session or doing that ILT. ILT is instructor led training. So much difficult. A webinar session, right? Because in face to face, you can see them if they're engaged or not, right? And you can see them when they're yawning or not. Pag inaantok, you can see them. But when here in webinar, they're just gonna opt to uh, turn off their video and they can do something else. And that's kind of that, that makes it challenging, right? But you, you have to be extra sensitive with the uh, body language and the cue. So if if and you can only do that by checking their responses online. That's why I'm also checking your responses because I want to ensure engagement. And then you can call them from time to time according to Jocelyn, that is correct. Attention check, that is correct. Um, Raymond, you motivate them. I'm not sure what else can we do in terms of motivation, but as a teacher, you can add additional points for those who are participative, right? Um, to those who will be sharing, mm -hmm their thoughts, their insights, and they've who, who have been glued all throughout the presentation, you can add additional points, right? Or you can you can tell them that there's gonna be an assessment after the presentation. Right? There are a lot of ways, creative ways how you can ensure engagement. <clears throat> but the number one is you have to be extra sensitive in terms of the uh, the language and the, the virtual body language and cues. Number two I think one mentioned this earlier. Yeah, Vida said, make them participative. Correct. Attention check, correct. I think one mentioned, you have to call on participants by name. Um, and that's why it's suggested that we limit the number of participants. Now, um, for you, when you will be facilitating a class in the future, I think you will only have 
less than siguro mga 40 siguro mga 40 to 50 40 to 50 participants so mas manageable than what we're having right now because we have over 100 close to 200 participants but try to call on participants by name and let them know ahead of time that you'll be doing this and you can use this strategically so as to encourage dialogue and collaboration and not to discourage participation all right, so you can call them. I'm, I'm seeing Gilbert, John, uh, Michael, Ethel. You can call them by their person or by their name. All right, call on participants by name. That's number two. Okay, don't forget you have to call the call them by their name. Next, you have to learn new ways to ask questions, um, like any questions. Those that actually doesn't work as well as the virtual classroom as it does. In the physical setting, you can try sending your question to the chat area or chat box. And that's why I've been encouraging everyone to type in your questions in our chat box um, instead of asking any questions. Gonna. So learn new ways to ask questions. Next is, guys, the trend now when you will be present you when you will be presenting you don't put everything in in your presentation and then you're just gonna read right because if anything i mean that's gonna put the um the audience to boredom if you're just if you have the tendency to to read your to, to just read your presentation and that was then and i remember when it comes to presentation and daming and always remember, you cannot use yung mga clip arts in your presentation. Yung, you know what clip arts are, di ba? Katong mag, katong mag -anana, yeah. like, like katong mga tukog-tukog ng -tukog, mga tao. You cannot use that because it doesn't look professional at all. You can use actual pictures, mga ganon. All right? Um, so going back to my tip, you have to refrain from reading. Um, you just use keywords and then you elaborate, or you can just use picture and then you elaborate. Do not do not put everything um, in one slide and then you're gonna cut everything. You're just gonna read it. It's gonna put put everyone to boredom because according to to the article that I came across, we read faster now than we, when we are reading parang our our minds process faster than our mouths so pag mas mabilis daw na mo basa ang atuang minds kaysa at atuang mouth so if you're just putting everything your spectators or your learners would be able to read to conclude faster than when you're just reading so dapat al Correct. Mura ta og bata ana nga nagreporting. So gone are the days na magbasa-basa. We're gonna put everything in one slide. That was then, but it's no longer the trend now. Especially in the corporate world, to those who are in a corporate setting, that's not applicable anymore. That according to Augustine, indeed the mind is faster than the mouth. That is correct. So refrain from reading, huh? You can just use mga bullet points, ganun, and then you elaborate it, all right? Just like what I'm doing right now, I'm just sharing with you the tips. So mga tips lang, and then I elaborate it, right? Next, try not to overemphasize the technology. Um, in a traditional class, you don't say, now I'm going to erase the whiteboard. Be careful of too many references to bandwidth or troubleshooting. And while it's important to acknowledge any technical issues, repeated apologies and references will emphasize the, the technology rather than the learning. So refrain from putting emphasis on the technological failure. So that's what it means when you, um, when you overemphasize the technology. So apparently when you will be facilitating a, an online session, you will encounter a lot of technological challenges, ganon, but you try not to overemphasize the technology, okay? Next, you collaborate. That's why you have to keep asking. No? You, so collaborate rather than to lecture. So work, you have to work to make participants partners in learning 
And when you have content that requires excessive lecture, you consider other formats for delivery, such as podcasts or recorded sessions. Actually, um, I would highly recommend no, to use other platforms than um, just you know, um, ha having presenting everything na ganitong platform lang. We're using Google Meet, no? Um, for teachers here, you can use other platforms. Like, for example, you can record ahead of time for the topic, and then you can upload it on U YouTube, and then you can ask your students or your participants to visit YouTube, and you can watch it from there. And then once they're done, you can go. You can go back to. You can all go back to the um, to Google Meet, right? Um, you can do that. And I plan to. I intend to do that earlier. But probably after the, as we conclude the session today, I'll let you see one of the videos that I uploaded on on YouTube, so you can see how it is done as well. So you can you can so you can replicate that too. You can record it ahead of time, and it can save you a lot of time and a lot of stress. But you can just all you need to do is just to direct your agents to or to give the link, and then they're gonna watch it on YouTube. And once they're done, um, you all you need to do is to elaborate and expound. Good on. All right. So col um, collaborate rather than to lecture, and also you can you consider other formats. Of uh, for delivery such as podcast or recorded session, so you can try to record, and that's the beauty of YouTube. You can upload your video and you can have it in a public setting so everyone can see it. And what's better is if you get, I don't know if if you have a lot of students and then you can have more than one thousand subscribers and you can have at least four thousand watch hours. Correct me if I'm wrong. Then you, your channel can also be monetized. So perk na yun. That's additional, ano, that's additional perk of maximizing YouTube. So probably after the session today, you can explore vlogging on YouTube on YouTube too. Diba? And you have hundreds of students, and it's easy for you to achieve that 1,000 subscribers target. No? And, and then your channel can be monetized. So another tip is you have to strive to collaborate rather than to lecture. So um, it's about collaboration. It's about synergy. You know what? Yes, 1K subscribers, 4K watchers. That is correct. Uh -huh. And I think see, si Mam Mam Anime Sapinit is a YouTube vlogger too, and you can you can like her YouTube channel. And I think she she's specializing on deaf mute. So if you want to know more about the science. Then you can like her YouTube channel too. Mga ganon. Um, so additional income din yon, no? So <laughs> additional income for everyone. But again, um, use another platform. You consider another platform. And the key here is collaboration, no? This is a big word in terms of um, online training or webinar, and that's about collaboration. Um, when we talk about collaboration, it's a it's synonymous to synergy. You know what synergy is? Have you heard of synergy? What's the meaning of synergy then? A lot of you said yes. Like in a team pushing one another to be stronger. Not sure one plus one equals three. Actions, being whole, teamwork, dynamic. Okay, actually, everything that you mentioned, everything is correct, no? Um, interactions, power, working together, working together, right? It's about it's like collaboration, no? Working, you work together. Because individually, we are. I mean, we are. I'm just a drop, but together we are. The f a force to reckon with. We are an ocean. Or individually, I'm just a stick. But together, if we're working together for one common goal, we can easily clear away the cobwebs. That's how powerful synergy is. So when we talk about synergy, it's actually a combination of two words. Synergy means synchronized energy. Synchronized energy. Yeah. That's synchronized energy. Synchronized energy, that's synergy. So we have to believe in the power of one. We have to believe in the power of teamwork. So we have to collaborate no? rather than 
lecturing. Okay? Pero sa ano, sa mga students, sa mga teachers here, uh, we don't take it away from you, no, to 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 lecture because that's what your job calls for and that's to lecture so i think for teachers you have to lecture and you have to ensure there is collaboration all right next is you have to use multimedia when it uh, when it makes sense not not just because you can for instance if the, if one if the only thing you're showing is someone's mouth moving then video may not be worth the effort and the video can actually become a distractor. As a rule of thumb, you have to use the simplest technology required to effectively meet your objective. Okay. So as what I've mentioned earlier, Kanina, as I mentioned that you have to use uh, different platforms, but you have to use those platforms when it makes sense, not just because you can, all right? And lastly, this is what I've been talking about. You have to limit the audience size um, in the webinar session um, because it is nearly impossible to achieve any real interaction with 150 people and above on, who are online all at once. And most webinar type events are short, so consider offering a session um, two or even three times. Otherwise, considering recording the session and making it available on demand only. So you have to be extra careful. You have to limit the the audience size, and you have you have because if it's more than one fifty, it's kind of difficult to deal with to handle this uh, tama, batching. Correct batching. Dapat may batching tayo. So you, we limit it to one fifty. 150 participants, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about the various tips? Which of these tips um, is most applicable for you? Or which of these are you having challenges on? I'm sure a lot of you would say um, refrain from reading. Sinong my challenge ito? Kasi not everyone is spontaneous, no? Agree? Not all, not everyone is spontaneous. Not everyone has that that agile thinking na, med, na madaling ano, madaling that they can easily think of um of supporting facts so that's why um my i think I, what i can leave you with is number one you have to read you read you read you read that's why i love reading books i love writing articles so you have to expand vocab vocabulary so you have to keep reading so that you can share something as well no because you cannot you cannot share you, ca you cannot share what you don't i mean you cannot you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot share if you don't know anything, right? So number one is you have to keep reading, especially to the teachers here, para mas, para we can have uh, a wider perspective, a wider understanding in terms of the topic. No. Yes, that is correct. According to Mamvida, master your craft to avoid reading. Actually, accor according to Joel, Olav, Olav, Sir Joel Olavides, what is the advisable duration for the effective effective we webinar? Um, sir, the answer is, it actually depends on the topic, pero if you are giving utmost consideration to what I mentioned earlier, yung attention to detail span of 30 minutes, the best is, siguro pinaka matagal is one to two hours. Okay, any question, any other questions or what is most applicable? So number one, as what I've mentioned, going back, refrain from reading, that's very important. So you have to master, no? Master whatever you're doing. If you're teaching you're if you're teaching math, then you can find other ways or effective ways. You can think or plan ahead how you can simplify yung mga concepts and principles in math. 
If you're, te- if you're teaching English, you can share um, any other mga, mga success stories. You can share that. So you can only do that when you are fond of reading. Because it is in reading that we learn something new. No? We learn something new and something different every day. And always remember, learning is a continuous process. Not because you are already a teacher now that you have to stop learning. No? And I'm even encouraging everyone here, especially the teachers, to continue learning. And, and to you can pursue your... Um, you can pursue your, um, how do you say this? Your edu- you can pursue education in the ac- academe. You can probably complete. You can probably enroll in masters or doctorate, and you can. Co- and there are a lot of ways how you can improve. So never ever stop learning and improving yourself, even if you are uh, at the pinnacle of success. So you have to continuously learn something new every day, and don't limit it to your area of specialization. Because if you are just focusing on English, I mean, that's what I've mentioned. There are a lot of great opportunities out there. Correct. That is correct, Ma'am Arlene. Graduate, graduate studies. So ang dami pa siguro dito who have not completed their master's degree or not even enrolled in the master's degree. So I'm encouraging everyone. Ako nga, um, I mean, I don't mean to brag, but this is not actually a requirement in the BPO industry to enroll in the academe to complete masters or doctorate pero i'm pursuing it because i believe in growth mindset no this is my way as well of anticipating for the future no? so you also have to anticipate for the future all right so i hope that i get your your commitment that you're and right now it's easier because uh, we're on platform again is Online online classes lang. So you can stay at the convenience of your home without going to the schools. Um, so mas madali that, that way. All right? So again, I'm encouraging everyone to pursue education. Okay? Hopefully. All right. Now, lastly, I'm going to share with you the tools that we can use to maximize audience engagement. Let me know how if you're familiar with this. Um, I'll start with type me, earn my micro credentials through online courses. That is correct, sir. Learning is a continuous process. That is correct. The world is so big out there to explore. So don't limit your uh, your specialization to education. You can you can learn about financial management, which is very timely and relevant. That's very um that's the in thing right now at the height of this pandemic we have to know how to manage our finances well right so you can learn more about financial management you can learn more about process improvement and that can be your competitive advantage that's my favorite pinaka favorite ko talaga ang competitive advantage so let me know type me also if you are teaching in college minimum requirement is masters that is correct mm-hmm. i used to be a college instructor um, but I had to give give I gave it up to pursue my doctorate so because I want kasi mas malaki daw yung rate if you have completed your doctorate then you have completed your masters so ayun and hopefully I can um, probably explore going abroad di ba? with my with with a better credential you can do that it will open a lot of great opportunities for you yes competitive advantage is the key so don't limit it to your area of specialization right okay, especially sa math teachers here if you're good at math you also have to be good with english because english is the the language of business communication no matter how, and that's a challenge, no? And you have a lot of information, a lot of great ideas, but you don't know how to communicate that. That's kind of challenging. So that will not translate to excellence. Pero kasi dito sa Pilipinas, doing research means higher salary and position. Di po talaga nakakuha yung essence and importance of research. <laughs> All right. Ah, okay. That's good. We have teachers in the Middle East. Very good. Learning never stops. Okay, guys, let me know if you're familiar with these platforms and you can explore this after the session. 
Um, these are helpful platforms, and I've been using these um, when I'm facilitating a class, all right? Number one, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Type me if you're familiar with Prezi. Okay, very good. We have we have a lot who are familiar with Prezi. Yes, very good. Very good. And, and the beauty of it is it, it really has that smooth transitioning from one slide to the other. So, so it's really... Ang, ang ganda ng Prezi. So you have to know how to... So I'm encouraging everyone, to those who are not familiar with this, you can research Prez, Prezi on Facebook, uh, on, on Google. You can just type in Prezi and then you explore it. Because it's... Especially in business presentation, it really, it, it really amazes uh, the, the participants, no? Because it's professional to look at. Ang ganda. Nakakahilo daw lang gamitin. Correct. And I was introduced long time already. We used that in a very good, very good that you've been using Prezi. And that's a very powerful uh, platform that we can use Prezi. All right. So you can use that. Um, to those who are not familiar with Prezi, please, you have to, as what I've mentioned, we've been talking about competitive advantage. And this can be your edge. Huh? Because you can even put it in your resume that you're good in Prezi presentation and stuff like that. All right? So Prezi. Number two is you can use when you're presenting images. No? Images. Um, I'm encouraging you to refrain from writing everything or in as much as possible. Dapat minimize text lang. No? And we're maximizing images. So Wow, magkakaroon daw ng karagdagang feature ang Prezi coming soon. Very good. That's nice to hear. Correct, sir. According to Anvic, images will make your slides alive. That is correct. But you have to be careful, ha? Yung mga images kasi may mga may, may protected yan, may mga copyright yan. So don't use yung mga copyrighted na ano. Um, also, um, about the images, correct, images, kasi nga, we have to realize that um, a lot of people are vis a majority of learners are are, are visual. You're familiar with Savvy, no? S A V I. No po, no. Okay, ang Savvy. If you research on Google. No, when using images, we need to acknowledge the source. Correct. Um, VKA, VKA. It's the same with SAVI. SAVI stands for um, S is to somatic. So there's somatic learning uh, learner. A is auditory. V is visual, and I is I think intellectual, something like that. Uh, SAVI. You can research more about SAVI learning, but but the point I'd like to drive is majority of the learners are visual learners. So if you are actually ang daming visual learners, siguro nasa mga 62, 60 to 70% are visual learners. So ganun kadami ang mga visual learners. So we use images. Yes, yeah, 65% visual, 60 to 70 visual learners. So we use images, okay? Pero again, when we're talking about images, yung mga actual pictures, you use actual pictures. Do not use yung mga, uh, how do I say it? Diba we have, we have mga pictures, yung mga picture ng tao na mga sticks, mga ganon. You don't use that, ha? Huh? Use actual pictures. Yung mga cartoons. Don't use that. And no, no for clip arts. Yes, Norwin, you 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 hit the nail on on the on the head. No, no for clip arts. I remember when I was when I was finishing my my master's course. I think one of my college professors was doing. Napaka traditional kasi. So we don't want you to be a traditional learner. Na gumaganan ganan. So don't use that. All right. So image um, image usage. Next, you can use audience polls. 
So you can use that. Um, pag mapapa question kayo ganon, so you can do that. Um, next is breakout groups. So when you will be handling a class or a thing, because due to limited time, as much as I'd like to do this or incorporate breakout groups, uh, we cannot do that. Do that, no. But but for your classes in the future, if you will be facilitating an online class, you can inject or you can put. You can use this as your way of injecting icebreaker. According to Norman, poll everywhere is a nice app too. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, sige. So breakout groups you can divide. Like for example, ngayon we have around uh, we have close to one hundred seventy participants today. No, so I can divide you into ten groups, and then so we'll have how many? We'll have 16 groups all in all, or 17, para 17 groups. So you can assign to group one, group two, ganon. So it can help in, in terms of the engagement. So breakout groups, it helps and it works. And lastly, of course, how can we forget video? No? <laughs> You can ask, uh, you can, uh, no, you can play some videos. Kaya nga sen kanina, I mentioned, you can, you can upload your video on YouTube. You can ask them to, uh, to watch it on YouTube. Ganon. So you can, kaya nga you plan ahead. It's highly recommended that you plan ahead. All right. Okay. So we started earlier with, I mean, our topic kasi today is effective communication, no? When we talk about effective communication, or when we talk about communication, we talk about the English language. So I'm going to end my presentation today with a short clip um, taken from my YouTube channel para you can have a taste of how my YouTube looks like. So I'll try to play. Hopefully, I'll be able to play. Will I be able to play this? I'm not sure. Um, will I be able to play this? I hindi. I I don't think it's. I don't think it's. We are able to play this one. Oh yeah, probably I'll just give you the link so that you can see it. And hold on. And I've placed everything there. Um, there is a specific uh, playlist on YouTube that you can look into. Um, there is free English training. So if you need English training, um, kanina a lot of you mentioned na we don't feel comfortable, we don't feel confident, ganun. So you can learn from through that link that I placed in the chat box. And I I think I have like over 10 videos there. But there are videos with less than, siguro mga two minutes lang or about, or th two to three minutes videos lang. Um, so I'm just encouraging everyone if you can share that to your friends, I mean, to your students and to your friends. Because if you know how to, I mean, English really has or will open a lot of great opportunities for you, especially in the corporate world. And going back to what I said, English can be your competitive advantage, right? Um, it creates that positive impression and it creates that, um, positive image if you know how to communicate in the English language. So I think um, let's call it a wrap because a lot of you maubusan na ata ng mga maubusan na ng load. <laughs> so. All right. So any questions, comments, or suggestions from the group? Josh, Sir Josh. Yes, Sir J. Hello, hello. Yes, we're good. Yes, Sir J. I'm here. Yes. Okay. So I, um, I have some questions now I received from Facebook. I be, before proceeding some questions now, um, let me share to you lang some of the remarks coming from our participants. We have one who said na maganda po ang webinar. Very useful po. Salamat. Uh, 
So we have some affirmations of our webinar this afternoon. So to proceed, we have some, um, actually there are people who personally messaged me, Sir J, and here are their questions. They want to remain anonymous now. <laughs> <laughs> but here is one question. Um, have you had some challenges before in facing in front of the crowd now or in front of the people or even online or over the phone? And if so, how did you handle such situation though? Did you encounter some challenges perhaps? Honestly speaking, Josh, I still feel that butterflies in my stomach every time I present something. Um, it's I think it's human nature. It's human nature that you will feel um, stressed, you will feel startled, or kabahan ka when you're presenting in front. Um, it's normal, but the key is you have to you have to acknowledge your your flaw. You have to acknowledge that this is something that you really have to work on. And then you just don't acknowledge it, but you have to do something about it. No? Like, like what I shared kanina, math was something that I wasn't really good at. So I, I acknowledged it and I did something about it. So same, same principle in terms of public speaking. Um, you have to acknowledge that you have that fear, but you don't... Uh, parang, um, how do I say it? Um, you don't distance yourself from that fear. Rather, you have to face it. So, for example, well, a lot of you are having that stage fright. You have to acknowledge and then you practice. You know? Kasi nga, as what I've mentioned, practice makes permanent. Hindi siya, hindi siya perfect. Ha? Practice makes permanent. So, pra practice lang talaga. So, you can practice it with your students and then you can practice it Siguro at the end of the day, it's about mindset or mind conditioning, no? Kasi ang problema kasi sa atin, if we are um, in the, put in a position na um, we are in a bigger crowd and then um, yung, how do you say it, yung tendency kasi natin if we're asked to deliver a speech, ganun, we pass it on to the others and then we pass it on to, on to the others kasi nga we don't have that confidence. Um, if we have that right mindset, you would, right mindset, we would consider that hey, this is an opportunity opportunity for me to grow. It's an opportunity for me to learn. And it doesn't really matter if I screw up or not. But what's important is I learned something. No? If I succeed, then very good. I, I commend myself for that. But if I don't succeed, then it's a learning opportunity for me. So, siguro mindset of being a fighter. Na. Like, for example, in our session today, um, um, ang webinar session, I mean, with, with over 160 or close to 170 participants, it's really overwhelming. So, but I never really had that speck of doubt na I wouldn't be able to deliver it. Kasi, I mean, it's it's not, it, it's I didn't think it that way. What I thought was, it's a learning opportunity for me um, to, it's an opportunity for me to share what I know and to pay it forward. And if I succeed, then then the better but if i don't succeed then it's a learning opportunity for me to learn i mean to to do better next time so ganun ang mindset ko josh so as uh, sir josh so dapat as teachers we have to have that fighting spirit strong fighting spirit na uh, uh, seeing situations in silver lining ika nga, right hello Yes, did I lose everyone? Me? Yes, we can hear you, Sir Josh. Okay. Yes, I agree, Sir Jet. No, uh, um, from mga veteran theater actors, that they are really expert on their um, chosen profession, and they, they even share that they still get uh, nervous. And I think it is normal for us to get nervous. Mas parang dapat kabahan tayo pag hindi na tayo kinakabahan. Correct. Because if, if you don't feel that anymore, parang we're not growing anymore, right? Because because as long as we're growing, we will still will continue to feel nervous. Correct, <laughs> correct. There are even others saying that let's fake it till we make it now. Uh. <laughs> and the key is you have to fake it. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, right now, um, siguro up to this very moment, I still feel that nervousness. Pero um, I, I just I just know how to fake it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Same here, sir. Same here. <laughs> that's what that's what we call masking imperfection. Correct. Nice term, masking imperfections. Yes. Okay, right. so, let's move on to the next question, Sir J. Um, here's another one. How is time consciousness important in online meetings or online classes? It's very important that we have to be conscious with the time because uh, um, we have to respect the time of your participants. Um, they, they may be doing something else. No, I remember, I just want to share with you a story. I love sharing stories. With, go ahead, um, go ahead. <laughs> With a particip uh, with a session like the session that I particip I've participated, they set a schedule nga nine a.m. to three p.m. na meet na training, and that was Saturday and Sunday. And you know I worked from Monday to Friday, you know, so I didn't really have that um, time off for that entire week because I had to participate in another online training Saturday Sunday. So I was a bit frustrated when it was already past four, close to 5 p.m., and the session hasn't concluded yet. So, so sabi ko, ito na nga lang ang rest day ko. <clears throat> I wasn't able to. So parang, there are people who are very sensitive with, with time. So you just have to be extra sensitive with the people. So if your schedule is 9 to 3, then by hook or by crook, your session should end before on or before the dot. All right, sir. I think we can still entertain questions. No, we still have time naman. Um, a question from Anna here in Google Meet. Ways to avoid mental block. Nansa na ba to kanina? Sorry, I was away for another meeting. But ways now to avoid mental block. Do we have, sir? It's normal that you will experience that during your webinar session. No? But I guess the... The best tip that I can think of to avoid mental mental block is to plan ahead. You have to have your talking points. You have to prepare for your life support. Life support would include number one, quotation. That's number one. So you, you have to be ready with your quotation. Another is a story that you can share. So you have to pre prepare a story. So you can research on the internet to find stories. Like for example, if my topic is about collaboration, I before I share before I facilitate the session, I always jumpstart my session with a story, a story about collaboration. Or just recently, I facilitated a program in conjunction to financial management. So I jump started my story with a, with a story about. Um, Critea Aguilera having challenges in terms of managing her finances. Ganon. So you can, that can be your life support. Um, so you can use those life support in, in terms of um, experiencing mental uh, mental block. So that's those are the tips that I can I can I can give with you. And then of course you plan ahead. No, dapat mga talking points ka. You have to have outline. So planning is everything. Correct. Planning is key, talaga, Sir J. And actually, in everything, you should always plan. Agree. Agree. All right. So here's another question from Grace here in Google Meet. How can we appear like speaking spontaneously, although in re reality we are using a script? How do you think newscasters speak without being noticed that they are reading from their script? Of course, they're using prompters. Naman. <laughs> Teleprompters. Teleprompters. But, yes. Actually, is it obvious ba? In, in, in online meetings or in online classes? Is it obvious ka, kaya if, if you are reading mm, something? When you are presenting, you have to ensure that your notes are visible. So just like when I'm present, as I presented earlier, I, had, I, I also have my notes um, in my presentation, but you, I'm not sure if you'd be, you'd be able to see that, but I put in the notes my talking points, mga ganon. So when you are presenting, you have to, dapat naka-present siya, but on your end, you should see your notes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ganon. So, so your audience and your participants will only see the slides, but on your end you will see your notes. Para I mean that you can you can use that as your guide para hindi ka magbamental block and so on. So dapat naka, naka present sa end ng participants ang, ang slide, but on your end you will see your your slide and your notes. Ganun. 
agree. Everybody, agree. everybody knows how to do that. Do you all know how to do that? In the book. Okay, so Remily knows how to do that. Jem knows how to do that. I think majority knows how to do that, no? Pero, um, what I'm using now is the presenter view. The presenter view of, uh, ano to? So my drive, Google Drive. So I, I uploaded my slide in Google Drive, and then I opened it. I opened it with Google Slides. And after I opened it within Google Slides, I click presenter view. So that's how you do it. Presenter view tayo. All right, Sergey. I think we don't have, I'm, I'm checking Facebook then. I think we don't have questions anymore. Um, I will borrow, uh, do you still have slides to present, Sergey? Or can I borrow the presentation? No, I, um, Go ahead, see, see. No, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone, Josh, for for I and mean, to DICT for inviting me as your resource speaker for today. And uh, this is a very good opportunity for me to pursue my um, my my dream of yung parang paying it forward. I really I really mm. love it that way. So thank you very much to all the teachers and to all the participants thank you very much and i hope that our session today is a worthwhile and uh rewarding session for everyone i hope that you learned something from from our session as much as i enjoyed sharing and learning from you guys so thank you very much of course we, we did we did learn a lot of course Serge. and for those who would want to rewatch this webinar session it is available it will be available um after this stream sa ating facebook that's at um, DICTFOOBC2 nasa videos na album you can um, check on the videos um, it will automatically be recorded there and then um, I think one ano, Sir Jen, no, one takeaway I got from this afternoon's um, webinar is this phrase from you practice is permanent diba? It, it, it's not ano, um, or practice makes permanent it, it's not an alarm practice makes perfect, but rather it leaves something permanent. And which, which I know, of course, um, everyone would agree. It's not just about perfection when you practice. Okay, Sergey, I will. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. you have session recap, correct? Yeah, I think I think we have covered everything. So for today, we talked about the steps in leading effective meetings. So we talked about um, setting the stage, and then um, um, I think we introduced a framework specifically in leading effective meetings. So spot mo models. So don't forget about that. And then we talked about the behavioral challenges and then the common problems in webinar session and also the tips in increasing webinar engagement. So I think we were able to cover everything, Sir Josh. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sir J. And I would like to personally invite everyone no, to um, <clears throat> To subscribe on your YouTube channel and to um I don't know oh, oh. actually I have been um also watching your um videos and really I don't know in just a, a small um amount or span of time you are able to encapsulate um tidbits English tidbits and some um tips and advice so yeah what what is your channel again Sir J it is you can search on YouTube Jeroel Sibala that's J E R O E L and my last name Sibala S I B A L A Yo Sir Jeroel Okay hey, can I borrow the presentation screen Sir J or do you still Yes have go ahead to... okay. How do I How can I, I I'll be the one to to share my screen Thank you so much everyone Yeah, do you see my screen now, everyone? Uh, 
about that one. All right? Okay. So, um, we would like to give this simple token of gratitude to our speaker this afternoon. So, the Department of Information and Communications Technology awards this certificate of appreciation to our speaker, Mr. Gerald D. Sibala, for sharing Serge, your time, talent, and expertise as our research speaker for our webinar this afternoon entitled Effective Communication for Webinars and Online Meetings, signed by um, Director Frederick D.C. Amor. So thank you very much, Serge, for, for sharing, for giving your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And thank you to those who stayed with us um, in the entirety of the presentation. So thank you very much. No words, Serge? Hi. Can oh, you right, hear me? Right. <laughs> thank you very much, Serge. Until next, was that stress? Yeah, yes, Serge. <laughs> Maybe oh we yeah. Can discuss one of these things, stress management or yes, I think I think, not discussing. Yes, I think that's something that we have to teach our um teachers, most especially the teachers, because I know that they're swamped with a lot of deliverables and I've seen a lot of posts that expressed frustrations and um siguro mga sadness mga sad posts about my uh, in relation to how they're bombarded with a lot of deliverables and the key is to be able to manage your time to be able to manage your stress so we'll give emphasis on the importance of um, urgency and importance of tasks so we can schedule a future session <clears throat> on how we can um, we can do time and stress management Thanks, everyone. Thank you, jo Sir Josh. All right. So we would also like to thank I just see Zerik is around. Hello, Josh. I think we lost Josh, sir. Okay. Sir, thank you very much for your time, sir. No, thank you as well, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. Yes, thank you too. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we yes, can hear yes. you, Sir Josh. All ah, right, okay. Sorry, I'm just having a technical glitch. Yeah, but um, um, this is um a public announcement. We we will be conducting the digital jobs PH technical training. This is a free training for um those who are interested to venture into um online freelancing. So our locations for Region Seven include um. Liloan Cebu, Tabogon Cebu, Lapu-Lapu City Cebu, Tubigon Bohol, and Pamplona Negros Oriental. So for those who are interested to join this free training, we have an online training and we also have a face-to-face -face training. If in case you are interested, then you just visit our Facebook page listed there are the links for you to apply. So for free lang yan And we would also like to thank um, our webinar technical committee 
um, our director, uh, Director Frederick D.C. Amores, our DICT Negros Oriental Provincial Officer, Engineer Aurelio Tinapay, and yours truly as your moderator. And also special thanks to the ICT Association of Dumaguete and Negros Oriental um, with Ma'am Dana. Uh, with Ma'am Dana and Ma'am Suzanne, who, who were also present. Actually, uh, Ma'am Dana and I were in the same meeting also, no? A couple of minutes ago, so nag, nag multitask while um, joining this webinar. And also to Inspiro and Intocom, who also, I don't know, who also shared um, Sir Gerald's time to be here in our webinar this afternoon. So thank you very much once again, and to Sir Je, Sir Aye. To Ma'am Dana, Ma'am Suzanne, yes, yes. and thank you. And see, Sir Rick. All right, to our participants, I know you've been waiting for this. So our link on the left is for the post uh, post assessment evaluation, while our link on the right is the link where you can download your certificates. So um, please um, take note of this. Or please take a screenshot because we will not um, we will not email you anymore of your certificates, but rather you have to visit um, the link found on the right hand side of your screen for you to download your certificate. So we don't have a quiz for today's web webinar, but rather um, just an evaluation um, form, and we will close the link at 5 p.m. today. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for participating, and until next time. Dolan, my friend. Okay, one. Okay, one. Thank 
Uno de los baños. Uno de los baños. 